Hi, I'm Tiffany and this is Towering TBR. Today I am joining you to share all of the books I read in the month of July. Before I get started, I want to say hey to all the new subscribers, and if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, that helps my channel out a lot. The first book I read in the month of July was Crying in H Mart by Michelle Saunders. I gave this book four stars. Um, it's It feels like a deeply personal journal. She is half Korean and half white, and when her mother dies, she feels like part of her Koreanness, that that identity is gone. Um, a lot of the ways that she would think about her mother was often in traditional Korean food. And so this book is a memoir of grief and of food and of identity. And I wrote down two uh, quotes that I think really sum up the book. She writes, Every time I remember that my mother is dead, it feels like I'm colliding with a wall that won't give. There's no escape, just a hard surface that I keep ramming into over and over again. A reminder of the immutable reality that I will never see her again. And the second quote is, She was my champion. She was my archive. She had taken the utmost care to preserve the evidence of me and my existence and growth, capturing me in images, saving all my documents and possessions. She had, she had all the knowledge of my being memorized. The time I was born, my unborn cravings, the first book I read. The formation of every characteristic, every ailment, and every victory. She observed me in unparalleled interest, inexhaustible devotion. Now that she is gone, there is no one left to ask about these things. The knowledge left unrecorded died with her. I think this was a great memoir and I would recommend you pick it up. The next book that I finished was the manga Our Colors by Gengoro Tagame. I gave this four and a half stars and the reason that I couldn't give it quite the full five stars is one, the main character, he has synesthesia, which is where he experiences emotions in different shades of red and blue. But as you can see, it's in black and white. So I felt like that kind of let it down a little bit. And also there was something at the end of the book that I really felt was unnecessary and I wish it hadn't been in there. So this is a story of a young Japanese teenager um, who is gay but he is closeted and basically even joins in the other students homophobia just to stay hidden so that they don't know he's gay. And one day he meets an openly out gay man, becomes his mentor and kind of gives him an example of how he might want to live his life. Um, but the man has secrets too, and it is just, it is a really great story, and I just loved it so much, so I gave it four and a half stars. I also read another graphic novel, and this was called Days of Sand by Amy DeJong. I gave this five stars. It was gorgeous. The art blew, blew me away. Um, it's about a journalist who is headed to the panhandle of Oklahoma during the Dust Bowl and he is there to get photos of how the Dust Bowl has impacted families and farmers who are living in the area. And in the book they have real black and white photographs that were taken that then become incorporated into the art and the juxtaposition is just gorgeous. The story is compelling. I can't say enough good things about it. It's it's great. I'm going to buy it soon. <laughs> then I had another five star. This was pretty good reading month this month. Uh, Betty by Tiffany McDaniel. This story was about Betty 
she was one of many siblings growing up poor wow. in Appalachia, Ohio. And she is mixed race, and her father is Cherokee, and her mother is Caucasian. Her mother has um, some mental issues that make their life harder, and um, the fact that she's mixed race, um, she experiences a lot of racism, um, not just from kids, but from teachers in her school as well. There are a there. lot of trigger warnings for this, so if you're interested, please look those up if you're sensitive. There was an animal abuse scene that almost made me stop reading because I just find that harder than people enduring bad things. But I highly recommend it. Five stars. Then I picked up Becky Chambers' new novella, Prayer for the Crown Shy. This is the second in her Monk and Robot duology. And... I went into it with pretty low expectations. Uh, I read the first part of the duology last year at a time when my health was really poor and I gave it two stars. And since Becky Chambers is one of my favorite authors, I was really hoping that it was just because I was in a bad place that I didn't enjoy the book. But I gave this one three stars. Um, I think I just prefer her stories that are set in outer space and I feel like she just doesn't have enough time in a novella to fully flesh out the characters and there's usually not very much plot, it's usually very slice of life, but it's about a non-binary monk named Dex and he in the first book meets a robot and they kind of go around talking about life and necessities and what do people need and how can others provide it. It's kind of philosophical. A lot of people call it heartwarming, but I think it was just okay. Um, yeah, I'll still probably read her novellas in the future because I love her and her writing usually, and I'll give them a chance anyway, but the duology was just not really for me. I then picked up a graphic memoir called Stitches by David Small. This um, was his life story about um, growing up he was a very um, ill child, sickly. They say that there's, they have money problems. Um, but anyway, one day he has a growth on his neck and they're like, oh, we should, you know, look into that and have it removed and during the surgery to have it removed um, they they scrape his vocal cords which makes him um, unable to speak for a while uh, he has to re-strengthen his vocal cords but um, for a time he is mute and that was an interesting perspective to follow um, his parents are kind of awful people like uh, they don't tell him that the growth that they had um, taken off was cancer, which it was. Um, it was an interesting story. The artwork is just kind of, I don't know, meh. So, anyway, I gave this three stars. I then picked up Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro. This I gave three and a half stars. It is a long and sprawling beginning of a trilogy. And I felt like a lot of the book was world building and kind of uh, setting up what, what might happen in the rest of the books. But it's about these magical children and they are recruited to a school and a supernatural creature um, starts coming after the children. And I feel like it could have been tightened up a little bit, and I feel like the pace was pretty slow. Kind of lacked some intrigue for a while. I was hoping it would be a bit more pacey. I have seen it categorized as horror, and I will say that there are definitely some creepy scenes in the book. The, the um, children are fascinating, as are the adults who are at the school. 
it's less of a school setting than I would have liked. They don't really get to the Institute until about 60% of the way through. But yeah, when they get there, they meet some other kids with magical abilities and they are trying to uncover a mystery and yeah. It was an enjoyable read, but I definitely had to push myself through because it was almost 700 pages and yeah, like I said, it lacked intrigue. So the next book I picked up was Ministry for the Future by Kim Stanley Robinson. This is a, uh, a near future climate fiction dystopian story and it starts out with a person in India trying to help others in this massive heat wave and the heat wave just kills so many people and I decided to DNF this at 70 pages because at the time the US and Europe were going through a dangerous heat wave and it just felt too grim and too bleak to carry on I I just didn't want to read about that kind of stuff the other reason I didn't like it is it was set in different vignettes rather than characters. It was more talking about either the climate change or trying to mitigate the climate change. But it came off really info dumpy and like he didn't use dialogue marks in some of the sections and it was just kind of a mess. So I decided to put it down. And because that was so bleak, I decided I needed to pick up the opposite of that, which was children's fantasy. So I picked up Monstrous by Marcy Kate Connolly. Um, this book is about Chimera. She has been um, brought back alive from her father, who is this genius scientist. And he doesn't quite make her how she was before. He adds cat eyes and he adds um, tail and wings so Chimera is working against this evil wizard to um, try and rescue girls that he is stealing and yeah it's kind of an adventure story from there I feel like because this was a children's book and I'm an adult I saw the plot twist coming from like a mile away but I don't know if it would be as obvious to children. Um, it was still a fun romp and I really liked Chimera and her. She was a very naive character, which at times annoyed me. But there are, the book at least explains later why she's so naive. So I gave this four stars and would recommend. It was quite fun. I decided that because it was Disability Pride Month, I would pick up The Oracle Code by, oh, Marieke Nietzschekamp. I'm so sorry if I butchered that. Um, this is a story about Barbara Gordon, who becomes paralyzed and becomes a wheelchair user. And the reason I decided to pick this up is because Jen Campbell said that this was a really positive representation of disability, especially in a superhero based world. She is the daughter of Commissioner Gordon in the DC Gotham world. And so anyways, she goes to a rehabilitation house to kind of learn how to use her wheelchair and kind of adapt to her new um, limitations and while she's there she uncovers a mystery and she investigates and pursues it. Um, I thought it was cute. I gave it three stars but I know I'm not the target demographic for this. I don't often read superhero stories and it's also, it's also YA but I thought the art was quite pretty and I thought it was a good representation for wheelchair users, although I am not one myself. Um, but anyway, I liked it. Three stars. And the last book I read was Broke in America by Joanne Samuel Goldblum and Colleen Shaddix. This is a nonfiction story um, about all the ways that US policy fails people in poverty. 
Um, this was, <laughs> I tabbed it so much, there was so much to learn. Um, it talks about how racism and sexism have affected people in poverty. It talks it, about how stagnating wages and um, soaring costs of living have really put too many people below the poverty line and because we aren't spending enough resources on these people, you have to be so, so, so far below the poverty line to even get help and there's often really long wait lines. It also talks about how our policies um, really don't consider all of the needs that people have. There's a whole chapter in here on hygiene and how um, welfare does not cover diapers and if your kid doesn't have clean diapers then the daycares won't take them and so then the parent misses out on being able to work because they don't have childcare. It also talked about um, how hard it can be to get a job if you don't have good hygiene, if you don't have clean clothes, if you don't have, you know, uh, clean washed body. There, there was so much to learn in here. In fact, uh, <laughs> I've tabbed it so much and this is a library book so I'm gonna have to untab all of these. But what I really thought was beneficial about this book is it doesn't just say, hey, these are all the problems we have regarding poverty and the policies of the government. At the end of each chapter, it breaks down small, manageable steps that we can do to help um, in those different areas. For example, one of the authors um, started a diaper bank where they gave diapers away to women who were in diaper need. And according to this book, one in three mothers is diaper insecure. They don't have the money to put their babies in clean diapers, which I thought was just absolutely appalling. It also talked about how it's a really it is a domino effect for people when they lose their homes. Um, they get bad credit, and so then they have to rent from slumlords, which don't take good care of their houses and often have leaks or critters or vermin or outdated paint that has lead in it. And it really just showed you that one piece of bad luck could just set you on this, this tumble downward, and it's so hard to climb back up. Um, I thought this was incredibly informative. I, I liked that they really broke down the preconceived notions that all homeless people, you know, deserve it or because they're substance abuse um, addicted or, or something else. I'm glad that they start with everybody deserves to have their basics fulfilled. They deserve to have a safe place to rest their head. They deserve to have food. They deserve to have water. That was another thing that I learned in here is there are so many people in the United States who don't have running water and um, they have to use bottled water and how expensive that is and oh my gosh, I can't talk about everything I learned in this book but it was amazing and a incredibly bleak but incredibly informative and an excellent read. So that's it. Those are the 10 books I read and the one book I DNF'd. Tell me, what was the best book you read in the month of July? And have you read any of these books? Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.